Good evening, it is Brian at Fitzpatrick's Garage, Dublin Road, Kildare. I want to show you these two cars because we have a scrappage offer on both of these cars at the moment. We are Fitzpatrick's Garage in Kildare Town. Brian is my name. If you want any information on this deal or these cars, please do give me a shout 086-843-1945. And the whole idea is that if you basically bring in an old car and you can basically, actually you can bring in a wheelbarrow for all we care and basically if you bring in something old push it in the door drop it off do whatever you need to do you can basically get 2,000 euros for that piece of J-U-N-K against either of these cars so what we're saying to you is you come in with any sort of car at all anything at all and we're going to give you 2,000 euros for that old car whatever it is you can bring a bicycle if you want and basically that is what's going to happen on something like this so there's great value in these cars because of that at the moment but they're two very very different cars in some ways but they're two very similar cars in other ways so these cars someone might look at this and then they might not have thought of that and i'm thinking maybe somebody has, might have thought of that but they haven't thought of this um so if you can bear with it and if you think there is a scrappage deal that is applicable to you then um, basically this video might be useful for you if you're generally interested in the iX20 versus the Honda Jazz uh, as a comparison this video might be useful for you as well because the rest of it is literally going to be about the cars themselves so like what we're saying to you just to clarify do you come in look at either of these cars which is this Jazz or this iX20 over here and we're going to basically offer you 2,000 euros no matter what you bring in and that's the minimum we can offer you more depending on the car but at least Two grand. Okay, sorry, I know I had to stress that point sometimes uh, because people do ring sometimes and maybe we weren't clear enough at the start. So, anyway, the two cars, first of all, starting off, let's move around to the back. This one here is diesel, this one over here is 1.3 petrol. Um, in terms of the rears of the cars, these I would classify as medium to small cars but extremely flexible in how they work. So, the first thing is, let's have a look in the boot of the iX20 and also the boot of this Honda Jazz. The Jazz is a 181 as you can see, the iX20 is a 161 but both of them are current models at the moment. So if you have a look at the boot, the nice thing about the iX20 boot, it's nice and big. This is a one owner car, I'm just going to clean the lens there. This is a one owner car from brand new. Um, in terms of the inside, the cool thing about these is you can actually drop the boot and then you get a really nice deep boot overall so very very useful down underneath then in here you do get a spare wheel as well but a lot of people like having the back tray up high and the reason being that it means that you can slide stuff in and out so I have to say the boot is really really good in those iX20s over here on the Jazz the boot is deep and there's also storage underneath so if you don't choose to go for the uh, spare wheel option you can have extra storage in down through there. There is a little bit of a lip on the Jazz but one thing that the Jazz has an advantage while this one has gone some flex, flex, flexibility even as you saw already which is the way that moves this one is lower and that actually is quite useful for some people so when you're getting stuff in and out of the car the height you have to lift something from there to there is not as high as it is from there to there. The rear of this car has parking sensors which make noise. The rear of this car has parking sensors when um, you're going backwards as well. So, in terms of the wheels, there is two, uh, sorry, 16-inch uh, alloy wheels on that, which are a diamond cut kind of finish. Over here, then, we have a 15-inch alloy wheel on the rear of this car. In terms of the boot, we can use this to close this down. In terms of this one here, we can use this to close this one down. So as we were saying, from the rear of the car, we start to see actually the iX20 is a little bit higher overall, uh, but the Jazz actually has that kind of lower loading path. However, the Jazz does have an ace up its sleeve when it comes to uh, loading in and out of the car. As we move on the side, I actually quite like the iX20 has these chrome little um, accents along the door which complement the diamond cut kind of shiny finish in through there as well. Um, everything is colour coded in terms of door handles and wing mirrors. Similarly with the Jazz, everything is colour coded all the way down the side of the car uh, including wing mirrors and all that kind of stuff as well. So in terms of the rear of the cars, the Jazz when you go to get into the back has a really really good right angled door for getting in and out. The iX20 is not bad for getting in and out but just not quite as much of a right angle and that actually makes a big difference when you're loading things in and out and you'll see in a minute actually the legroom is really good in the Jazz. Um, while we're at it let's have a look. The iX20 height. 
so as in the height for getting in and out. The iX20 does have a little bit of an advantage there in terms of height because the jazz seats are a little bit lower overall. After that then, in terms of electrics for windows, child locks back through here and the jazz similarly again is going to have electrics for rear windows, child locks back through there so nothing particularly different there. In terms of the inside, the jazz has a kangaroo pocket over here in the back the iX20 has two kangaroo pockets across the back. After that then, you will have three head restraints, three three-point safety belts, Isofix over here and Isofix over there for child seats. Similarly then, the iX20 in through here will have a similar three three-point safety belts, armrest in through the centre, which the Jazz does not have, and it has the Isofix points for the child seats as well. So as you can see, similar layouts, but some uh, pros and cons between the two of them. One thing I would say to you on the iX20 is, what we can do along here is actually move, and then stooping down here, see the way I'm moving the seat backwards and forwards? So what I do is I have a rail, and that will allow me to move this seat backwards or forwards. The advantage of that then is, I am gaining a little bit of extra space. So if you look here, again, probably about eh, probably about three inches there between there and there. So when you're loading in stuff, that's quite useful. And then after that, if we let this seat backwards, it has the flexibility to drop flat. And that means then in through the back, your loading area stays consistent all the way through. So quite useful. And the seats also have a kind of, how would you say, a recline function. So you can let them all the way back or you can have them slightly forward, so for passenger uh, usage that's quite useful. After that then, in terms of the inside, as you're saying, the iX20 has the advantage height-wise, so it is higher in here as well, and the legroom is actually quite good. Uh, if I'm sitting up like that and looking down through here, legroom is actually very, very good on the iX20. After that then, a little bit of storage, but that obviously depends how close your driver sits in front. So overall, iX20, lots of space, flexibility on the seats, Nice high driving, um, or sorry, nice high riding position in terms of the inside and the roof. There is loads of room in the roof. The iX20 is a really well thought out car. However, the Jazz, in terms of the rear, is actually oddly enough. It doesn't look it, but it actually feels bigger in here. So if I look in through here, I seem to have more space ahead of me like that. After that, then, I'm just going to kill this radio here for a sec. Okay, so radio's off. So it seems to actually have more space. Headroom, quite similar. Um, and then after that though, so you'll see along through here, there is an absolutely unusual amount of space in the back of a Jazz. It's weird for that size of car to have so much uh, space. But one cool thing it does is these flip and lock. And you can do that on both sides. So you have this tall mode. Uh, so if you've got awkward stuff, you can actually get kind of awkward things that you'd normally put in the back of a car style van or something like that. Like its um, counterpart, the seats have the ability to fold flat. So you get, and I mean genuinely, when you let those seats down, you actually get similar load areas to that of a commercial vehicle overall. So it has those magic seats which come up, which is an advantage, and those other seats come down, and there's lots and lots of legroom in terms of the back of the car. So all in all though, like to be honest, between the two cars, they do things very, very, you know, they do similar things. They're, again, as we were saying, medium to small size cars, but extremely, extremely flexible in how they operate overall. So moving on forward in terms of the inside of the cars, um, okay, so electrics again over here. This is the kind of trim that's on the Jazz. The Jazz has one other little party piece, and what that is, is, I'm just gonna put the camera. Unfortunately, I gotta leave the camera here for a moment because I broke my other camera, which was able to pause. Um, so this goes forward, that drops down. Right, nothing else I know does that. This is what's called refresh mode. So when I'm in refresh mode, that means now I can sit in the back of the car. The X20 doesn't do this. This is super comfortable. So all you're doing is you're sitting as far as the back, um, but you know, and you can still your safety belt over here and all that kind of stuff as well, but um, it's real damn comfortable and you've great visibility all the way through. So this refresh mode is unique to the Jazz. Overall, it's quite useful, unusual, and nice. And again, I'm just gonna put the camera down here for a moment while we try and square all this up to the way it should be. So, 
that drops forward like so, that drops back, we'll let that up a bit and oh yeah, head restraint in through here so nearly there, apologies about the bad camera work and we're back up to square one, perfect. Um, so in terms of that I think that is quite useful, that function, uh, moving around along the rear one thing I forgot to say, LED tail lights in through here. Uh, these are more of a halogen style bulb. Uh, while we're walking around to the driver's side or the other side of the car, actually let's look at the passenger side of the iX20 because we've just looked at the passenger side of the Jazz. So the iX20 getting in and out, okay it doesn't do what the Jazz did there, but nice, oh, nice side driving position. Lots of space in terms of the front there where the glove box is in front of you, so quite good. I would say quite comfortable, nice place to be. Uh, one thing actually I have to say, the iX20 has a little bit more support on the peripheral parts of the seat, although that doesn't suit everyone, it depends how you're built. So uh, some people will rather a flatter, wider seat, some people will rather the kind of buckets. Again, the Honda has it there, but not as pronounced as the Jazz, or sorry, as the iX20 down through there. Um, in terms of the inside of the car, let's have a look over here. So, electrics for windows and mirrors. Controls here uh, for height, light, brightness of the dash, all that kind of stuff as well. After that then, controls on the steering wheel, trip information for average speed, fuel efficiency and all that kind of stuff there. Voice activated. Say your command. Bluetooth in through here. And after that then, usual radio kind of set up with air conditioning, USB and auxiliary down through there. Gears are six forward because this one's diesel. And then up through here, temperature gauge, center locking, all that kind of stuff as well. Safety wise, you will have driver, passenger, side airbags, curtain airbags up high and one little party trick this one has is it's got a driver's armrest which is really damn nice. The height adjustable seat is quite good and one thing I will say to you is yes it does feel higher up than the other car. Nice visibility with the way the A-pillars are set up over there so quite a nice place to be um, in terms of the Jazz. So the Jazz um, lots and lots of space for getting in and out of the car, usual stuff over here, electrics for windows and mirrors like we saw before, but this time we've got front park sensors as well. We also have lane change warning, we have a drinks holder in through here. After that then we've got cruise control, we have Bluetooth for mobile phone, we have headlights that are automated, we have wipers that are automated, we have heating controls and air conditioning with USB number one and USB number two inside in this armrest which is fixed in this case. After that then we also have Honda Connect which is basically an Android style radio which is giving you all your phone and audio information and also more functionality like surfing the web and calculators and calendars and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, this one is a six speed gearbox with a really rev happy 100 horsepower engine. The iX20 is a 1.4 diesel, this one is a 1.3 petrol, so 1.4 diesel, 90 horsepower, turbo diesel, this one here 1.3 iVTEC petrol, 100 horsepower. This car here is 200 for Rotex, this one here is 200 quid for Rotex. Fuel efficiency is about 45 or so miles per gallon which is about 6 litres per 100 kilometres. Fuel efficiency is somewhere in the region of about, uh, just thinking now for a sec, this is going to be uh, 50, 50 and a bit which in litres per 100 kilometres is probably about 5 or so, maybe a little bit less litres per 100 kilometres. This one is going to have a warranty until 2021. This one here has a warranty until 2021. This one needs to be serviced every 30,000 kilometers or two years. This one is serviced every 15,000 kilometers or one year. But the servicing is less expensive on that because it's more frequent, whereas this one is less frequent but more expensive. Um, so, overall, there are two cars that I was saying, if you've managed to stick through the video, fair play to you. Because I think I'm actually, what you call it, uh, I do realize how boring that could be. But possibly for someone that's looking at scrappage, that's thinking, and do you know what? The scrappage deals on brand new cars at the moment. They're kind of finished, I think. So this might allow someone to jump onto a scrappage offer. Uh, secondly, though, it might have been useful, hopefully, for somebody that was considering either that car and might now think of this one, or someone that's thinking about that car and might now think of that one, or someone that's just curious about the differences between the two of them overall. So I appreciate your time. We are a family-run business operation for almost 70 years. If there's any information you want in the car, please do give me a call. 86 843 Brian is my name. Thank you for taking time to watch. Hopefully these cars are of interest. We can do finance. We can do every part exchange, but as you were saying, it's a minimum two 2,000 euros on these cars here. To summarize, this one here, lots and lots of equipment, lots of versatility. This one here, um, nice high riding position actually, considering the size of the car overall. But to be honest, I think they do 
pretty much the same thing, just in slightly different ways. Very good cars. Thank you for taking time to watch.